hello my loves welcome back to my channel today i'm coming to you guys with my one month post-op panniculectomy surgery which is skin removal um so if you're new here and you're just looking at this video you can check back my previous video i'm trying to film quick because i guess it's gonna rain i just got home from work and i never have time to film for you guys so this is pretty much a non-edited long video y'all gonna hear me cuss too fucking bad any bloopers too bad um the birds are chirping i'm in my yard um in my deck so anyway i'm good um if you guys have been following me on snapchat that's usually where you get the most updates um i did post on tiktok all my social medias are going to be linked down below i'm trying to change up my um list down there and anything i talk about i will have it listed down below with amazon links now i am affiliated with amazon so those are affiliate links that you would see for the most part um for amazon and all my amazon finds these are products that i highly recommend as well i did mention that um on my social media platforms that i will come to you guys with an update a reveal and um with the products that i would highly 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 recommend so i am four weeks as of today i had my surgery on may 24th for a panicolectomy which is a skin removal surgery um i opted to just do that and not a tummy tuck one for financial reasons and two because i didn't deem it necessary for myself at this point in time um i've been waiting a long time for it and i was kind of playing it up in my head and waiting it out and I kind of wish my one regret is that I didn't do it last year um, which I could have but I didn't and that's fine so at my heaviest I weighed 311.9 pounds so let's round it off to 312 pounds documented I think I weighed way more um, and I decided to get the lap band surgery back in 20. 13 I want to say um, in 2015 I ended up getting the gastric sleeve revision um, and then I spent the next five years up until 2020 being miserable with my life because I could not stand my sleeve I was always sick constantly throwing up severe reflux which was history of it, it never happened I never had history of it so I'm just breaking down to you um my history if you're new here so um i decided and my doctor highly recommended that i get the gastric bypass revision it was the same surgeon i trust him with my life people ask why did you choose to do the same surgeon i said because it's not the surgeon's fault why my surgery didn't work it'd be one thing if i'd had complications and he was negligent in my care but he was not those surgeries just did not work for me and do your research google is free 99 um so i decided and he definitely highly recommended that i go with the gastric bypass and you know what i just am sad that i did not run and rush to do it sooner because i was suffering and i was nauseous and i was always constantly vomiting so i those were my complications with the uh sleeve gastrectomy so i ended up getting the gastric bypass back in august 2020. hi uh say hi my neighbors be neighborly um so i opted to do that and Excuse, excuse me i worked all day y'all this is my all day every day face like it's just burning right now anyway um so in august 2020 i did my gastric bypass revision instantly felt relief um i've lost a total of 100 pounds from my beginning journey of 2013 um i lost an additional um about 50 pounds after the gastric bypass um so in total i've lost 100 pounds and i've maintained the same weight for about over a year um so i kind of just stayed plateaued between 209 and 215 and i just couldn't lose any more weight but this hanging skin was ugh. so um the hanging skin was very I knew it was there. I've always had a pooch. I've always looked pregnant or I've, you know, I've always had a gut. A lot of us hormonally have a little gut. Most women have a little gut. That's just the way that our bodies are because we have an arch in our back. So it arches in the front a little bit. Um, but I was carrying around a lot of weight. Now, my surgeon did not weigh how much he took out of skin. My assumption was that I had at least seven and a half pounds of skin. Um, now fat and skin don't weigh as much as muscle. So even though it looks like a lot, it may not be a lot, but it was a lot. Um, I didn't take pictures, but I have video of what he drew on me. Unfortunately, I don't feel comfortable sharing that with the world. Um, I, I don't mind sharing it with like my fellow um, medical staff or friends. I don't mind sharing that video so they can see how much I was carrying around. Um, but I did show in my previous video kind of like what I look like and the hanging skin. Um, 
so one thing they recommend is that you pretty much have to be kind of hunched over so that your stitching can heal really really good so you have to consider that you have thick skin you have thick skin from your belly from your pianus area and now it's going to be attached to this thin thin skin in your pelvic area like right by your vagine um so you have to kind of stay hunched over so that those stitching y'all root as fuck right now you know that um so um wow that's great i'm sorry um you know what i should put my headphones on um so <laughs> i don't know if this is gonna mess with it but let's do that because i don't know if you guys can hear me well so let's see so that looks a little weird but anyway um <laughs> what was i anyway i had a lot of loose hanging skin i had to make sure that i was hunched over i honestly did not want to stand up straight i had some back pain and back discomfort um from hunching over for about the first week and a half i was pretty much feeling like i was hunched over um and then of course when i stand up i'm still hunched i'm in protective mode um so yes i was not on narcotics for long um i stayed overnight one day at the hospital um which was for the best that's what my provider wanted normally he would he would do a day surgery but with me he wanted to keep me overnight just because of my history and he was scared of scar tissue and because i had a big panis <laughs> yes a big um uh gut area a big apron um i think i'm like a level three if you look up like a panicolectomy you'll see different levels i was more at a level three and four like i was right in between those two so three and a half um so if you look at the scale for a panicolectomy and look at the scale of a panis p-a-n-n-u-s you will see different levels um so i had a very low overhang and it was deterring me from working out i do a lot of yoga um i don't really talk about it too much but i was doing it a lot for the last two months before surgery and i tell you it worked it it worked miraculous miracles it worked miraculously um after surgery because i was able to navigate when i was using my core um and avoiding that so i used my upper arms and my legs a lot so being in tune with my body especially with doing yoga i was able to acknowledge when i was utilizing my core too much and i shouldn't be so that helped me tremendously anyway i went back to work last week um i was out for three weeks um if you have a sedentary job that's ideal um if you have more of a physical job take the six to eight weeks and even longer if you need to and of course work that out with your provider like tell him this is what i do what do you recommend i don't want to reopen this incision which you can there's people i know that are like eight weeks out two months out and they've reopened one section of their incision because you're still healing your fat is really trying to join back in with your abdominal muscles and all those nerve endings are just trying to connect and speaking of which um I got asked a lot how I felt. Um, there was a lot of tingling sensation. It felt like a lot of bumblebees buzzing around in my belly. It's that vibrational feeling. And the best way I could explain it is when you hit your funny bone and you get that vibrational, annoying kind of pain, but it's not really painful. It's just like it buzzes. Um, it, that's how it felt like to me if I sneezed. I saw God, okay? Um, after two weeks though, if I sneezed, I was fine. But for the first two weeks when I sneezed, <laughs> I saw the light, y'all. I saw the light. So me hunching over and going almost in the fetal position is the only thing that helped me with that kind of pain. That was the most painful thing. Um, now with surgery, I had two drains. I had one on each hip and after one week he removed the right drain which was actually my most troublesome drain that was the drain that um pulled the stitches popped out of and i wanted out so bad and that one was draining less so he took that one out and i stayed with that um my one on my left for another week um and i wanted that one out so bad i was like i told the apr and i'm like take it out i'll do lymphatic massages not a problem i keep an eye on it and i wasn't draining that much anyway i was draining kind of what he ideally would have found a normal drainage or less um so i did that um got my drains removed and i felt instantly better i think the drains are just annoying because they're hanging out of your skin and you have to be really really careful with them and you i did feel a lot and i still do feel a lot of sensitivity in my drain sites um it's sore um and all that um so before surgery i had this morbid thought that i was gonna look the same and i was still gonna look pregnant and 
I didn't I couldn't visualize the results because I just have always had this hanging skin or a big tummy area and I know what my body's like I know I have a small waist I know I have an arch on the booty you know I know all that um, but I just didn't see myself past the gut and I had to come to terms with that this is why I was doing it I was trying to get relief don't worry about what the results are as long as your wound is good and all that so with that I'm going to show you guys what I look like. I know 10 minutes in and you're like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Anyway, <laughs> too bad. I'm telling you my experience first and then I'll show you guys what I look like. Um, I am bloated. I worked all day and sitting down bloats a lot. Now I am wearing what I think is like a stage two faha um, because, and then I'll get into more details with that. Um, I ended up opting for this faha. It is the most comfortable thing for me. I don't feel constriction when I wear a constrictive device because I'm used to wearing one about 20 years i've been wearing like a bodysuit to kind of keep my fat smooth and from jiggling too much and to kind of look smoother in my dresses um so i'm used to always wearing something it's actually like a safety thing like a like a, like a safety blanket for me so i think this is a level two faha um and i think i can already buckle it in but anyway i will show you guys what i look like <laughs> i am a little bloated in the bottom belly part um but um yeah so <laughs> if you guys look at my old video um or you've been a supporter of mine you know what i look like especially if you've seen me on snapchat i always showed my outfits of the day and i'm not listen i'm i i dress how i want to dress so it's tight dresses um leggings tight clothes i didn't care i mean i care what i look like but i always put myself together so let me show you guys what i look like y'all ready I'm not ready. I don't know why I'm not ready. Anyway. All right. So this is what I look like. I am wearing a faja. Um, this is my body right now. Uh, swelling would probably be constant for the next year even. Um, I heard when you work out, you will get swelling and bloating. And I am wearing a faja. Um, that I actually think I can already buckle here. So, um, yeah. That's what I look like. And the boobs are pushed up simply because <laughs> of the faja. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that. Anyway, so that's what I look like <laughs> right now. Um, so, I'm happy with my results. I'm still chunky. I still have the, um, it's called an upper abdominal roll i call it extra boobies because that's really what it is so anyway i have a bag of things that i would recommend that you guys get and shoot the questions down below this is gonna be a little lengthier video but yeah i don't care right um so this is the faja that i'm wearing right now i actually went to um a person here locally in the state of connecticut to get my faja and it was the best experience i've ever had um, I almost passed out the other day because the binder or the device, the, what I was using to keep me compressed shifted and it started cutting off, I'm assuming, some circulation. So uh, my heart rate went up to the 140s. I'm normally like at a high 70s. Um, I got nauseous and I turned pale. So I quickly ran to the bathroom. I um, work in a hospital. I quickly ran to the bathroom and I released um, the faja loosened up and although I was still nauseous I got almost instant relief so evenly distributing the compression is very important with the surgery you do not want to reopen an incision you do not want to push pressure into one area more than the other it's going to cause discomfort so you have to be mindful of how your faja or your binders are being worn so when you get out of the hospital usually most doctors will give you a traditional it smells clean I washed it um, we'll give you a traditional faja. Um, this is a, sorry, a binder. This is a binder whether you have a hernia repair, um, abdominal, any abdominal surgeries, they usually give you a binder. If you've had bariatric surgery, I wish I would have had one of these when I had bariatric surgery because it felt like the pulling was intense. So this I used for a whole week until I met the doctor. I had already purchased the fajas. I know I showed it on Snapchat. Not a faja, oh my God, I keep saying faja. It's a binder. So this is a three in one or two in one for me, postpartum binder. It comes, this one comes with two pieces. It's a belt similar to this that I left in the house. It's a pelvic belt. 
and that pelvic belt i've actually been using it up here with this faja to keep like this from bunching up in the back because it bunches up in the back a little weird but it fits phenomenal around my waist where it matters so this is a three in one or two in one binder which i'll have it linked um i have both the plus size and the regular size and um it's called one size so definitely follow the measurements on these items that i'm listing below these are the same exact items i bought if they sell out i'm sure they'll have more um but this binder is uh, adjustable it is super friendly um for use it's velcroed up the only thing is i recommend putting it on a shirt under these types of items for skin integrity reasons i'm very ocd about my skin kind of neurotic about it and you get itchy and all that so i highly recommend you moisturize the top area do not you use eucerin use um any skin protectant vaseline um i use eucerin vaseline i also have what's the other one the white bottle whatever um so yeah it's anything that's of skin barrier highly recommend to have on hand which i don't have here um get that or vaseline vaseline is cheap it is a non-irritating non-clog pouring you just put that in the upper parts of your abdomen and even maybe like on the upper thigh area where this is possibly able to rub on and i recommend buying those really really super soft tanks just like this one i had a whole bunch of black ones a lot of gray ones and i always wear it go past my pelvic area cover my incision even though they were bandaged and then put the binder over it so one i'm protecting my skin and two i'm protecting that incision from having constant rubbing with something that's a not pleasant to have rubbed up on um in that area i'm pretty numb it's tingly um i don't feel pain um i didn't really feel pain it was just discomfort like i stated before with the bumblebees and all that um so this is the one binder i recommend at least having two on deck you do not have to go all out um i also have this binder from the same seller but different seller if that makes sense it's a different website this one's a little bit more meshy but the same concept applies and it also came with a pelvic belt and it's the same pelvic belt so this one's a little softer so this one i would recommend if you don't have rolls like i do i'm still thickums um, so if you're pretty smooth and you're kind of on the smaller side and most of your weight was mostly in the center, I recommend getting something like this, that this is a little bit smoother. I still wear this. I just don't wear it for like traveling or like if I'm going to work because it bunches. It's very soft, but this is a good binder to have if you're going to bed. And that's what I mostly use it for if I'm resting um, and not moving around too much because again, I don't want it to bunch up. This is a lot more thinner material but it is super comfortable and breathable and I actually can wear this without a top so I'm going to link those of course below and also of a regular white binder so you might not like those um these come in nude and they come in black I got them in black because I feel like the nude ones would kind of get grungy when you wash them or if you're not stain them they'll stain very easily um with the pelvic belt I should have brought the pelvic belt out um but I also purchased one of these belts compressions this is the one that cut into me really really bad um this is good for working out hands down not a problem because you're not going to be wearing it for long on me though i'm a lot curvier so i have to focus this belt mostly on the central middle part and not so much where my curvature and my hips meet because again i'm curvy it's gonna bunch there um so this is good for working out i did clean the house um with this on and then I put the pelvic belt on my pelvic area and that helped with the compression. Um, I personally am I'm pretty much gonna compress until I feel I'm not compressing. So if it's five years down the line and I'm still using a faja or a binder of some sort or a compression garment of some sort, I'm probably gonna do that. I love the way that it looks with my clothes. My clothes slide, you know, easily. I don't feel like the rub on certain materials. I'm very sensory. So if an item doesn't feel soft, I don't like the way it feels. It almost makes my teeth hurt. Um, so this I'm also gonna link. If you're bigger or thick like me, I recommend getting the longer one. This is six feet, six feet. I recommend getting the nine foot and the wider one, which I might get into and buy, but right now I don't find the need for it because I like my faja the way it is. And I like using the abdominal uh, pelvic binder part 
in addition to that um now again this is the faja that i have if you want a faja amazon sells a couple that i bought purchased and tried on and i can link those as well unfortunately i returned them because again i'm curvier and it just i, I was having issues finding the right size so i was gonna repurchase one that was like a panty a complete panty um set so it's like literally like a whole bodysuit um i'm gonna repurchase that one and get the right size i think i'm a 3x on that one um for comparison so um they just returned my money for the one that i purchased that didn't fit so i'm gonna repurchase it and it's gonna be nude because that way it'll look nicer under my dresses that are lighter and i know what size i am now so it's a 3x child that return policy was a mess okay now medicinal wise whatever your doctor recommends take it but remember if you take it um if you take pain medicine you're gonna get constipated you have to be very very careful so make sure you go right before surgery like the day of make sure you poop um or make sure you take the things that you need to take to help you go because some people just deal with chronic constipation and if you do just just be mindful of that it is so uncomfortable to push when you cannot and should not be using too much of your abdominal muscles um with that said um i didn't have that problem i only took um i only took my narcotic the day of surgery my nurses wanted to make me feel comfortable and feel good and be able to walk around and they gave me the perfect concoction and i filled my medications and i only took it once when i got home because i was uncomfortable from the ride and learning how to sit in my recliner chair and all that one thing i highly 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 recommend is considering that you if you don't have a recliner that's automatic do not you cannot and should not be pulling and pushing yourself upright on a recliner it needs to be an electric recliner i highly recommend it so technically you can't sleep on your side or on your stomach for probably the first eight weeks um for a few reasons one to not reopen the stitching and to push weight on certain areas um, two, to not build up seromas, which is fluid buildup under between the skin and, and your, your muscle. You can build up um, liquid. And what happens is you lose elasticity in that area and then you just look like you have sagging skin still. So you want to compress to keep those two parts together so they can start joining together. And two, you want to keep it so that you're not shifting around too much or sleeping on one side where the fluid can build up in one side and not the other. You want your body to evenly distribute that fluid. Massaging that area feels really, really good. It feels weird. So what I do is I take my hands and I press down into my abdomen and I don't touch my incision. And that to me helps me move along any fluid that I have build up. And then I end up peeing. So those are kind of similar to a lymphatic massage. You can opt for those if you're willing to pay for those insurances. A lot of insurances don't cover that. So highly recommend having a recliner, lots of freaking pillows. If not a recliner, have a shit ton of pillows so that you can elevate um, under your knees and sit upright in the bed and just, I don't care how you are. If you're like this, that is probably for the best. You won't feel comfortable if you're back and sides, uh, stomach and side sleeper. I didn't at first, but now I'm kind of codependent on it and they're picking up my recliner tomorrow. So I know when I filmed this, I was waiting for the recliner to come in. Um, and now that I'm filming this, they're picking it up. And I was kind of codependent on it. It's very comfortable for me because I felt safe. Um, so highly recommend those items. Some people were talking about like toilet seat lifts and all that. Up to you. Um, I didn't have any problems getting up from the toilet but that was because I was using my knees I was taking my time slow and if I needed help of course I had someone there for the first few days um, to help me with that said I recommend that you have someone help you for at least a week um, if not at least four days which I did I had four days worth of help um, from the hospital to when I got home and someone was always there um, I was allowed to take a shower three days after surgery I could not move or remove the binder for three days um, so I kind of did like quick bird baths just to keep my goods clean because I um, uh, I couldn't. Um, so I couldn't just touch that middle region. Um, and then I recommend keeping a little notebook with a pen handy in the bathroom with left, right, and the date and the time um, that you empty out those drains. You need to document that for your provider. Um, 
and some providers don't really care but mine does and i care i wanted to know how much i was outputting a day so i pretty much every time i went to the bathroom maybe like four times a day i would dump the if there was enough in there to document i would dump the um whatever was in my um bulbs for my my, my drains my drain tubes um so i documented that for the first week and let him know i'm still outputting x amount for x amount when they remove that first tube that other tube's going to overcompensate and probably start filling up more or it you might just be draining less and less and less every day which is pretty normal um and then they could remove that drain um, I feel like I'm all over the place, but I don't want to miss a thing. Um, so yes, highly recommend a recliner. If you don't already have one, you can rent a medical recliner, which is what I did. And it cost me about $200 for the whole month. Um, so it's come in handy as far as my comfort and safety goes. It's actually a lift recliner. So if I felt like I couldn't stand up like this with the use of my knees and, and that area, and I felt like I was pulling on my abdomen too much, I would use the lift part. So I am actually very happy with that decision that i made um just a couple things tylenol get yourself you know i got the coated tabs the ones that look like ibuprofen those go down a little bit easier you're probably going to be on antibiotics so make sure you take those drink and eat lots of protein and try to stay away from a lot of salty foods i did not do that for like a full day i was eating just shit and just salty food salty foods and i was bloated like i felt a little pressure on actually my drain sites out of all things and a little bit like by my incision by the next day i kind of flushed it out and i was fine and i was like oh let's not do that anymore um so anyway a few things that i would recommend getting are arnica tabs um now arnica tabs it's very similar to arnica gel it's just the tabs these are dissolvables you put them under your tongue um you usually use to like every, I usually use two like every six hours and it helps with like muscle pain bruising and all that it's just more of a holistic approach and not like narcotic or Tylenol so I could take this um, I would take my Tylenol my muscle relaxer and I didn't take a narcotic um, and then I would take this and my vitamins so my multivitamin highly recommend vitamin b12 if you're a bariatric patient you know that you have to take a lot of those vitamins um anyway so get back on your vitamin regimen and make sure your protein intake is good top notch so yeah the arnica tabs th they come in many different brands um this is pretty much just 60 tabs um i still have some i i feel like i could use them on days that you know i'm like feeling bruising and stuff like that which i do my thighs still feel bruised for some odd ass reason um the dosage of this is pretty it shouldn't be super high this is 9c hpus so uh just nine whatever that is um nine uh, i don't know but this is a pretty general brand i have this cream in my medical office this is what we use for patients for the skin for topical reasons um but the arnica tabs i think they helped especially preventing bruising i started bruising like the first week and i just started getting on these after day three and i started noticing that the swelling kind of went by really really fast and for someone that bruises very easily i was very happy because i didn't have bruising there i feel bruising that's a different story anyway bromelain is a great enzyme bromelain is in you find that in fresh pineapple um now the bromelain enzyme does just the same very similar to what the arnica tabs do um and it's very helpful with swelling and bruising um and also helps you kind of just move along i i just i love bromelain i also love uh, pineapples if you guys have been watching me um i got just a simple 500 milligrams i take one twice a day um one in the morning and one at night um i personally love bromelain i don't know why i didn't start taking it sooner um bromelain has other you know benefits to it but i mostly took it to help heal and speed along the healing process um for like bruising and tenderness and all that so i wanted all that so these are like not that many things the, the binders can probably run you between like 20 to like 40 50 dollars depending on where you buy them from but i'm gonna link the ones i spent about 25 26 dollars on my binders i got them pretty much next day um if you do buy it before surgery and you're still big um definitely measure yourself first and get if you're on the plus size definitely get the 
the plus one and then test it out of course after surgery and you're gonna have your general binder and they sell general binders sorry for the noise the neighbors now doing lawn work um i think he held off because he saw me earlier but anyway um you could definitely buy these or even ask your provider if they have an extra one it's always nice to ask um also ask them for a urine specimen cup because that's also going to help you measure your output for your drains now some doctors opt for no drains i don't like that idea i know drains are annoying but being someone that is very very well versed in wound care i think drains are very effective wound vacs are even better but it's again up to your provider anyway highly recommend asking questions what are the expectations for healing what is his expectations for aftercare oh there's some pretty blue bug that i don't want coming over here but it's blue and teal but we don't want it to come over here um anyway yeah ask 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 away ask questions how long should i be out of work for um do i get a binder am i gonna get drained some doctors are very very specific mine was super specific your incision is gonna be from here to here remember your skin is thick here it's thin here i don't want you pulling on it i need you to be hunched over for at least a week week and a half two weeks you're gonna see me this day and that day and that day and he's very very fast and very very specific so yes if you guys have any questions please feel free to comment down below um once i upload this it might take me a little bit but i'm gonna have a list of all the products that i highly recommend getting um if you are um sensitive to products definitely consult your doctor as well um if you're more on the sensitive side with medications or even like things like this like supplements um for supplements if you already take your vitamins and minerals keep taking that continue taking that that helps with healing and definitely uptake your protein if you're not already and yeah just stay safe guys try to maintain your skin integrity that that's a plus that helps with healing if your skin is super super dry it's gonna crack if your skin is wet it's it might cause an infection on your wound so keep your wound clean and dry um and ask for extra supplies before you leave the hospital so um overall i'm happy with my results i think my my brain is trying to connect that that's no longer there that that body part is no longer there aesthetically i love what i see um i'm still chunky and thick and i like that i didn't expect to be skinny in the first place um and i didn't expect to look like i had a bbl so i'm just shocked at the results because it was a massive change for me and my clothes fit differently you can see my curves my natural curves um yes i'm wearing a faja so it sucks me up so you don't see my little fat rolls that i do have but either way i am fine with or without it i prefer to have a protective binder on or faja so yeah if you guys have any questions ask away i'll probably do another update in a month or so or a few weeks all dependent so i thank you guys so much for joining me today um and for following me along this journey and if you're new here please subscribe because i like to have a lot of subscribers one day that'd be nice um i've been doing youtube for over 10 years and here we are i haven't done a makeup video in a long time and my bad <laughs> anyway i appreciate all your support and all the love and all the positivity that i've i've gotten online on instagram twitter tiktok on facebook it's more of my personal page but i've gotten a lot a lot a lot of wonderful feedback and support and yes this bitch is snatched finally i uh look on the outside how i feel on the inside so anyway yes and i ain't never been with a fatty <laughs> let me stop okay um <laughs> i love you guys and you guys have a good day be safe and ask questions Demand from your providers what you need to know. And um, if you have a good surgeon, like I did, because my incision, chef's kiss, I like the way that he cut me, if that makes sense. Mm, that's kind of weird. Anyway, I love you guys. And I'll talk to you in my next video or in this video. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, bye. <laughs>